Hey guys, I am Raccoon. Today let's see a lucky man. Every night, a sexy goddess will come to find this man. He attracts countless beauties with his strong power, and all the beauties want to own him. Since then, he conquers beauties while taking adventures, and gradually builds his harem. How does the man do it? Let's get it revealed. Because of boredom, gods come to the human world from heaven to live with humans. They can't use their power in the human world, but can strengthen humans' power with the blessing, ordering them to fight for them. Once they receive the blessing from a god, they will become the god's familiar. The main character, Bel is the only familiar of the goddess, Hestia. One day when taking an adventure, Bel is defeated by a minotaur. When he thinks he is about to be killed, a powerful female swordsman kills the minotaur. After getting saved, Bel falls in love with the female swordsman and starts to ask for her information around. Later, he knows the female swordsman is Ace, one of Loki's familiars, and she is one of the strongest adventurers. Bel is still a rookie adventurer. Either his strength or his fame is far inferior to Ace. But Bell doesn't give up. He remembers that his grandfather once said that adventurers must meet their love in the dungeon. So Bell decides to try hard to improve his strength until he becomes a man worthy of A's. When Bell returns home, Hestia runs to him. Different from other gods and their familiars, Bell has a very close relationship with his goddess because Hestia loves her only familiar. Each familiar will show his stats on his back. When Hestia checks Bell's stats, she finds Bell has awakened his first skill today. The skill is named Lyra's Freeze, which will allow Bell's power to improve based on his feelings. The more he misses the one he likes, the stronger he will become. The next day, Bell wakes up in Hestia's arms. He heads to the dungeon to take a new adventure. Bell's weapon is a dagger. He defeats various kinds of monsters with his agility. Because of Lyra's freeze, his stats rise rapidly. After that, Bell goes to the tavern to celebrate his progress. Coincidentally, Aze and other familiars of Loki also come to the tavern. After they drink alcohol, Aze's teammate, a wolfman starts to talk about some funny things in the adventure, including the incident that Bell was defeated by a minotaur. The wolfman laughs at Bell's weak power, which makes him feel very humiliated. Ashamed, he runs out of the tavern and rushes to the dungeon to take a new adventure. He realizes only if he tries harder to get stronger can he catch up with Ace, otherwise, he will be laughed at again. Finally, Bell gets injured and finishes his adventure with his power becoming stronger. Hestia feels proud of him, knowing that her familiar can definitely be a strong hero. To help him get stronger, Hestia decides to give him a powerful weapon. Bell's weapon is just an ordinary dagger now. It has no problems to use it in the primary dungeon, but when he enters a high-level dungeon, this ordinary dagger is too weak. So Hestia comes to the gods' party, intending to ask other gods to make a weapon for Bell. In fact, Hestia doesn't like parties because she only has a weak familiar. Other gods have many powerful familiars, so most of them look down upon her. For example, Loki, who has the strongest familiar, often mocks Hestia and her familiar for being weak and poor. Hestia then laughs at Loki's plain figure as her counterattack. Though petite, Hestia has a sexy body and Loki's body is indeed a bit thin in comparison. After being mocked, Loki leaves in shame. At this point, Hestia sees her target for the party, Hephaestus. She then kneels down to Hephaestus, the god of forging, asking her to make a weapon for Bell. Seeing Hestia so sincere, Hephaestus agrees to her request and makes a dagger for Bell. The next day, the monster Philia will be held in the city, in which the powerful familiars will fight against various kinds of monsters in the arena. Before it starts, someone unexpectedly frees the monster in the cage. Hestia intended to give the dagger to Bell on this day, but the fleeing monster, a white gorilla sets its eyes on them. Before Hestia could give the dagger, she is chased after by the gorilla. To protect Hestia, Bell fights against it, only to get his weapon broken. After that, he can't fight anymore and takes Hestia to run away. To avoid being chased, Bell locks Hestia into an alley halfway and makes himself a bait to lure the gorilla away to ensure Hestia's safety. The organizers of the monster Philia are informed of the fact that many monsters had escaped, and then hurriedly send their subordinates to ask for help from various powerful familiars, hoping to kill the monsters with their power so as not to cause a more serious disaster. After the information is spread out, many familiars decide to join the fight, including Ace. With the help of these strongest familiars, other escaped monsters are soon killed. Meanwhile, the white gorilla keeps chasing Bell and corners him. At this moment, Hestia, who successfully escaped, shows up again, and then they are both knocked down by the white gorilla. Bell can't understand why Hestia comes to find him. Hestia tells him that she will face danger with her familiar and will never escape alone. After that, she gives the dagger to Bell and names it Hestia Knife. After getting it, Bell has courage again. It is a powerful weapon that can grow more powerful with the user together. When holding it, Bell's combat power enhances a lot and he fights against the white gorilla again. This time, his weapon won't be broken and can easily break the white gorilla's defense. Finally, Bell kills it with the new weapon and his agility, thus getting praised by many people. The one who freed the monsters is watching this aside. She deliberately causes trouble for Bell and will hatch more plots afterwards. After defeating the white gorilla, Bell becomes famous. A half-elf advisor offers to help him purchase new equipment. She deliberately wears light clothes and rubs Bell on her, making Bell feel very shy. After that, the advisor takes Bell to the shop of the Hephaestus familiar, where there are various kinds of powerful weapons and armor. 
but Bell doesn't have a lot of money, and he can't even afford the cheapest equipment in the shop. In order to repay Hephaestus for making the weapon, Hestia happens to work as a saleswoman in her shop. Seeing Bell shopping with the advisor, she gets jealous, warning the advisor not to seduce Bell. Since Bell can't afford the equipment in that shop, the advisor takes him to another shop. Most of the items sold here are made by novice smiths so they are cheaper. Some novices may become master smiths in the future, and the equipment they made is not only cheap but also not bad, which is very suitable for those not so wealthy just like Bell. Now Bell has already got a new weapon, but he still needs a set of armor. Among the items in the shop, he chooses a set of light armor, which is made by Velf. Bell spends almost all his money buying the armor. On his way home, Bell notices a girl being chased. Out of kindness, he immediately helps her, but soon the girl flees. When returning home, Bell quickly puts on his new equipment and decides to enter the dungeon again. At this moment, a girl named Lily comes to find Bell, offering to be his supporter. Supporters are like adventurers' servants and can help them pick up the core and equipment dropped by monsters. Bell happens to need a supporter, so he agrees to Lily's request. Because Lily can change her appearance, Bell doesn't recognize that she is the girl who was chased before. They start to take adventures in the dungeon together. While Bell is fighting against monsters, Lily is picking up the items dropped by the monsters aside, and she will also help to fight sometimes. However, the reason she was chased is that she is a thief. She deliberately approaches Bell because she notices his weapon is very powerful, thinking that it may be very expensive. After the adventure, Bell heads to the adventurer's guild to get his payment, only to find his Hestia knife missing. It turns out that Lily stole it, but it can only be used by Bell and other people using it is just like using scrap metal, so no one wants to buy it. Lily walks out of the shop disappointedly. At this moment, Bell's friend recognizes the Hestia knife, so Lily can only drop it and run away. Later, Bell gets back his weapon from his friend and finally feels relieved. But Bell doesn't notice it was Lily who had stolen the dagger and still teams up with her. When re-entering the dungeon, Bell straps the Hestia knife to his arm so that it will not get lost again. This time Bell earns a lot of money, and he divides the money equally with Lily, which surprises her. Normally, supporters can only get 1% or less of the money. Bell's kindness makes Lily feel very guilty. As Bell gets stronger, he earns a lot of money in the dungeon. Hestia has lived a poor life with Bell for a long time, and now he can finally take Hestia to have an expensive and delicious meal. Hestia considers it a date, so she comes to the bath of the goddess, intending to dress up after bathing. But her thought is discovered by other goddesses, and they all want to see who she is interested in. Many goddesses surround him after they see him because they all like his cute face. Seeing that Bell is popular among the goddesses, Hestia instantly gets jealous, so she grabs him and runs away. They hide everywhere and finally escape them late at night. They also miss their dinner, but they see the night view of the city from the tower, which can also be considered a good date. At this moment, all the money Lily earned is snatched by other familiars. There are good and bad familiars in the world, and Lily's god, Soma's familiars are bad familiars. Their god Soma only brews all kinds of booze and most of Soma's familiars are heavy drinkers. To buy booze, they have done a lot of bad things. Lily was born as a Soma's familiar. Though kind, she is also forced by others to do bad things. Since most of the familiars are adventurers, Lily starts to hate adventurers as time passes by. It was until Belle's appearance that her attitude gradually changed. During the adventures in these days, Belle learns to cast magic. He now has only one magic, which can be cast without chanting and can be activated quickly, named Fire Bolt. Belle is very excited because it is his first time taking adventures with magic. However, he accidentally runs out of his magic power and faints in the dungeon. Luckily, Ace passes by and saves him again. When he sees the girl he likes after he wakes up, he instantly runs away out of shyness. After resting for a night, Belle regains his magic power. When he is about to enter the dungeon, Lily is threatened by Soma's familiars, so she has to go against her mind and betray Belle again. The rule of Soma's familiars is that the children they give birth to will also become members of the familiars, so Lily is destined to be Soma's familiar when she was born. Her parents died in the dungeon when she was young. After that, Lily has been enslaved by other familiars. If she wants to leave, she must earn a lot of money and give it to the familiar that enslaved her. Before leaving, she also needs his permission. During the adventures these days, Lily is sure that Belle's dagger is definitely a top weapon. If she finds a knowledgeable merchant, she must be able to sell it for a good price. Later, when Belle is fighting against monsters in the dungeon, she steals the Hestia knife from a distance with an iron wire. Now Belle lost his main weapon and can only fight with a spare weapon, causing him to be in danger. However, Lily still leaves Belle for her own freedom. On her way, she is ambushed by another group of Soma's familiars. Lily and the familiar who threatened Lily are robbed together. They snatch all of Lily's belongings and tell her to wait for death. Lily feels regretful, thinking that it is all because she betrayed the kind boy, Belle. Just when she is desperate, Belle unexpectedly flees the previous area with the Hestia knife. He kills the monsters around Lily, saving her again. Seeing Belle doesn't blame her for betraying him, Lily feels guilty and moved. After that, she becomes Belle's companion and is loyal to him. Afterwards, the mysterious man who freed the white gorilla takes action again, who is unexpectedly the god of beauty, Freya. She asks her familiars to train a minotaur and test Belle. 
After her last adventure, Lily escapes from Soma's familiars under Belle's protection. Seeing Lily, Hestia asks her to swear that she will never betray Belle again. Lily makes her vow with determination. Hestia can tell Lily isn't lying so she accepts her as a companion. Though willing to let Lily become Belle's companion, Hestia doesn't allow her to be Belle's lover. So she deliberately makes close contact with Belle to show her intimate relationship with him. Lily doesn't want to lose. She also makes herself close to Belle's body. Belle feels very shy and runs to the adventurer's guild. In the guild, Belle sees Aze. He intends to flee again out of shyness, but this time he has stopped. Aze always wants to apologize to him. Because the Minotaur which defeated Belle at the beginning of the story was actually chased by Aze and then ran to Belle. At that time, Belle was in a position where there was originally not such a powerful monster. To make an apology, Aze decides to help Belle with special training. After a period of time, Belle, a newcomer of level 1, has improved his strength greatly under the training of a strong man of level 5. A week later, the training is over. Belle is grateful for Aze's help, but Hestia is very jealous since Aze is the most important rival in love. To show her intimate relationship with Belle, Hestia hugs him tightly, causing Aze to leave awkwardly. Not long after, Aze ranks up to level 6. In this world, it is very difficult for adventurers to rank up. Half of the adventurers stay at level 1 for life, and the strongest adventurer is only level 7 at present. Now Aze is level 6, which is very close to the strongest adventurer. However, Bell is still a rookie of level 1, so he can't help feeling sad. One day when he enters the dungeon, he unexpectedly meets a minotaur, which is supposed to live in deeper areas and would not have shown up here. Lily suggests Bell quickly escape, but he doesn't want to be defeated by a minotaur again. If he wants to become as powerful as Aze, he must challenge stronger monsters. So he fights against the minotaur, but it isn't a normal minotaur. After being specially trained by Freya's familiar, it is more powerful than other minotaurs. Bell soon falls into a tough battle. His attack has little effect on it, and he can only dodge its attacks with his agility. At this moment, Aze and her team also enter the dungeon. Seeing Bell in a tough fight, Aze intends to help him, but Bell refuses. This time he wants to defeat it alone. Generally speaking, the adventurer of level 1 is definitely no match for a minotaur. But after fighting and being specially trained for these days, Bell's strength has surpassed that of a level 1 adventurer. Bell keeps attacking the minotaur and hits it several times, causing it to get wounded. Belle continuously casts Fire Bolt at these wounds and finally defeats the Minotaur. Aze and her companions are shocked by how quickly Belle became stronger. Not long after, Belle ranks up to level 2. It only took him a month and a half to go from level 1 to level 2, which is a new record. After getting promoted, Belle gains a new skill, Argonaut. This skill named after the hero shows that Belle wants to be a hero like Argonaut, and it allows Belle to burst out with the power that can reverse the situation at the critical moment. Belle's fame spreads not only among adventurers, the gods are also discussing this newcomer. Before that, it was Aze who ranked up the fastest, but it also took her a year to go from level 1 to level 2. Each familiar of level 2 can get a unique title. Since Bell ranked up to level 2, he has always dreamed that he will get a cool title. But after discussion, the gods decide to name Bell Little Rookie. Although the title is not very nice, Bell's fame is still spreading out. Now Bell can find more companions to team up with. Meanwhile, some familiars envy his fame. They think Bell has just risen to level 2 and is not strong enough, so they come to provoke him. Luckily, Belle's friends, the powerful elf maid and the tavern's hostess drive them away. After leveling up, Belle intends to change into better equipment and he is very happy with the light armor, so he comes to the shop again, intending to find other works made by Velf. Coincidentally, Velf happens to sell his goods in the shop. He offers to join Belle's team and he can make equipment for Belle for free afterwards. Belle is so pleased that he immediately accepts Velf's request. In fact, Velf is skilled in forging and he can even make a unique magic sword. However, he was isolated among Hephaestus's familiars because he doesn't want to make a magic sword for greedy and violent customers, and no one has ever wanted to team up with him. After they team up, Bell has never asked Velf to make a weapon for him. After knowing Bell's character, Velf thinks he deserves the weapon made by him. So Velf makes a good short knife for Bell as his secondary weapon. With a new member joining, Bell's team becomes more powerful. This day they intend to explore the deeper parts of the dungeon, which means it will be more dangerous. Deep in the dungeon, both the strength and the number of monsters have increased significantly. There is another team on the same floor as Bell, and they encounter a large number of monsters that are difficult to deal with, so they can only flee. When running away, they meet Bell's team. If they choose to detour, they will probably be caught up. So they decide to run past Bell, causing the monsters to target Bell's team. Finally, the other team manages to escape, but Bell and his companions fall into a tough fight. In the passage, a large number of monsters appear on both sides. In addition, the passage collapses, causing Lily and Velf to get hurt by the falling stones. In such a desperate situation, it is impossible to defeat the monsters and return to the upper floor. Now they are on the 16th floor of the dungeon. Lily suggests they head further down because the 18th floor is a safe zone without monsters. As long as they can successfully pass the 17th floor, they can get out of danger. Meanwhile, the team escaping from the dungeon tells Hestia about the situation that they led the monsters to Bell when they were escaping, and then apologize for it. Hestia doesn't blame them and asks them to go back to the dungeon to rescue Bell's team. 
Besides, she also asks for help from other gods. The messenger god, Hermes, joins the rescue with his familiars. Some of Bell's friends also come to help them after receiving the information. Now Bell and his companions are heading to the 17th floor. Lily hides their scents with a smelly prop to avoid being discovered by monsters. However, after they walk for a while, the smell of the prop disappears, and then a group of minotaurs notices them. Lily and Velf are injured so they can't fight. Now Bell can only fight alone. After killing a minotaur, more and more minotaurs show up. At this moment, Bell's skill, Argonaut is activated. He then bursts out supreme power in this desperate situation, killing all minotaurs with one shot. After that, he exhausts all his physical strength and is unable to fight anymore. Afterwards, Bell takes Lily and Velf to the entrance of the 17th floor with difficulty. There are not many monsters on the 17th floor, but a boss named Goliath is guarding here. Bell, of course, cannot challenge such a terrifying boss. Instead, he tries hard to escape. Finally, he makes it and jumps into the 18th floor. After reaching the safe floor, Bell falls into a coma due to exhaustion. Coincidentally, Aze is also having a rest on the 18th floor so she saves Bell and his companions. Since there are no monsters on the 18th floor, adventurers who want to explore deeper will rest here. Although they are in the dungeon, there is a giant crystal on top, which shines like a sun. The crystal will dim after it shines for a while, and then lights up again, just like the cycle that days alternate with nights. At night, Hestia goes to the 18th floor with a group of people. Gods are not allowed to enter the dungeon, but Bell hasn't returned home for a long time, so Hestia is made an exception to save him in the dungeon. Hermes, who comes with Hestia, is also a god. For some reason, Hermes pays close attention to Bell. The two gods rarely enter the dungeon, so they decide to have a visit here. Adventurers built a town on the 18th floor, where there are inns and shops, but it is so expensive that no one wants to spend money here. After the girls walk around the town, they decide to take a bath in the river together. At this point, Hermes asks Bell to follow him to a place. They then climb on a tree, and Bell finally realizes that Hermes wants to peek at the girls bathing. Bell intends to stop Hermes out of justice, but is pushed into the river. Seeing Bell, some of the girls are shy and some of them get excited. Bell feels guilty and immediately flees away. Bell runs far and comes to another river, where he does not expect that there is also a girl bathing. The elf girl is Bell's friend. Knowing that he doesn't mean to peek at her, she forgives him. The elf is now a maid in the tavern, but she used to be an adventurer and was a strong man of level 4. Her companions were plotted by other adventurers before, and she is the only one who survived. In order to avenge her companions, the elf killed all the adventurers who plotted against them. Since then, she has worked in a tavern and no longer takes adventures. The elf enters the dungeon again entirely because of her friendship with Bell. From the story of the elf, we can know that there are also many bad adventurers. After Bell becomes the fastest leveled up adventurer, while he is noticed by many people, there are also many people jealous of him. Some adventurers notice Bell here and intend to teach him a lesson. The next day, they kidnap Hestia and force Bell to go to a remote place. Those adventurers jealous of him surround him, and one of them offers to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Bell. This man can be invisible and Bell can't see him, so Bell can only be hit at first. It turns out that in order to test Bell, Hermes secretly gave the magic helmet, with which the user can get invisible, to Bell's opponent. Hearing about the duel, Bell's companions come to help him and fight against the adventurers surrounding Bell. Hestia is also saved by Lily, and then they head to find Bell. Meanwhile, during the fight, Bell gradually has a special sense. He can detect the opponent's movements through hostility. Soon, Bell defeats him, but his opponent doesn't want to accept his failure and even wants to kill Bell. In a rage, Hestia makes an exception to stop the duel with divine power. But gods are not allowed to enter the dungeon and use divine power. Hestia breaks the rule, causing a disaster to happen. Later, the boss of the 17th floor, Goliath breaks into the 18th floor with other monsters. Because Aes and other strong men headed to deeper floors, now only weak adventurers are still on the 18th floor. Bell immediately joins the fight with his companions. Other adventurers also unite in facing the sudden disaster. Adventurers can easily defeat other monsters, but Goliath is so powerful that it can only be killed when they join forces. The warriors of the adventurers are attracting Goliath's attention, and archers are assisting and attacking, while magicians are chanting spells in the distance. Their attacks quickly knock it down. However, the strongest ability of Goliath is neither attack nor defense, but amazing self-healing. In an instant, it gets completely recovered and defeats many adventurers. If they want to completely defeat Goliath, they must cause irreparable injuries to it. At the critical moment, they all attack it with their strongest skills and all their efforts. But Bell was knocked unconscious by Goliath and has not woken up yet. Hestia stays by his side and talks to him, hoping to wake him up quickly. Bell hears Hestia's call in a coma, and he remembers his grandfather once said that only the one who gambles his life on protecting others can be called a hero. Plus he thinks that there are still many people who need help. He finally gets awake, and then walks towards Goliath with a long sword. Seeing Bell walking towards Goliath at the risk of his life, other adventurers start to cover Bell with their attacks. At the critical moment, Bell's skill, Argonaut exerts its greatest power. Finally, Bell kills Goliath, leaving no chance to it to get recovered. After that, the adventurers all cheer for Bell and his victory. They gather around Bell and congratulate him. Now, Bell finally becomes a real hero. 
That brings the end of the season. We've seen that Bell grows from a newcomer to a great adventurer. With his bravery and kindness, he forms a reliable team and is still expanding it. I believe that Bell can definitely become an adventurer as powerful as A's in the future. For Bell, monsters and challenges are not the hardest things to deal with. It should be how to make a decision among the girls he loves. At the beginning of the story, he meets A's in the dungeon and falls in love with her. But it is the goddess Hestia who is always by his side. Which girl do you like best, A's, Hestia or other girls? Comment below to tell me your answers. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will make more recaps of excellent anime afterwards. Thanks for your watching, bye.